So let's just go through a couple of examples. Unfortunately, what, what, what I'm doing today, you know, I, I no longer talk about what we own. So I pick up a couple of examples of what I owned in the past. You know, I started this business in late 97. And, uh, you know, uh, along the way, been through a couple um, <clears throat> really traumatic events. You know, one is sort of the Asian financial crisis and then the technology bubble, a couple of the different things. But during those period of time, you, you tend to have more interesting opportunities. Let's start with, uh, uh, let's go back to 98. So it was a fall in 98. And I tell you, the search that I go through are very simple because I'm interested in all sorts of different business. I usually just get menus. You know, I got hooked to value line while I was a student here. You know, every issue as it comes out, I just, you know, love to read the whole thing from beginning to end because that's really the best uh, kind of education if you want to have an encyclopedia knowledge base and database, which you have to. Uh, so just to go through that page after page after page is just enormously helpful. And, and the first thing I always check is sort of the new low list. You know, the, the, the new kind of a low is the book, low is the P, low is this, low is that. That really attract me more than the new high list. Now this actually, I don't have any more of my copies. I get rid of that. So I asked them for reprint and the number is not right. I mean, I was looking more of somewhere around, uh, uh, I think it's a September or something, August that when the stock was roughly around 28. So this is a 46, it's not right. Uh, so it's roughly called that 28 to 30. Now you look at this one, you know, what is the first thing jumps to you? Somebody give me a, a quick read. Yes. I found that uh, the stock price fluctuation, right. high and low, change every year. Yeah, yeah. Anything else? Yes. Oh, it's just off a right, right. Anything else? Now, if you're an investor, you don't really care where it was traded before, actually. <laughs> All I care, and I tell you what I look for, is I first look at the valuation. And if the valuation doesn't fit, I don't even want to really kind of go beyond. So what's, what do we know about the valuation? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's a good point. And what is the constitution of the book value? So everything, you know, every time you see is a below book value, you want to say, what's in the book? What's in the book? How much is the book? What? Now that's simple. You can just, you know, call it a 28 and then you got a what? Uh, 11 and a half million shares, roughly 300 something. Low 300 million. Just do approximate. You don't have to really do all the quick ones. And you'll see where it is. Now, the uh, the, the uh, working capital is almost a 300 million, in a sense. And of course, it was the end of the uh, Q3. And in, in retail, what, what, what do you know about uh, kind of the end of a Q3 in retail? Is that this is really where you know your, your kind of a quick uh, encyclopedia knowledge really helps you. All retails have built up a huge amount of inventory the last quarter. So you look at back to the previous years to say what is a normal like, because they're going to really collect a lot of cash by the end of the year. So you say, okay, so it's a 300 million. It's almost the entire book value, roughly 275 is in the uh, is in the uh, working capital. Everything else cancel each other. And so you probably collect about 100 million cash at the end of the quarter if you look at the other two years. So roughly you got a 200 million liquid asset and plus 100 million of fixed asset. And if you do, you know, a little bit more study, you're going to see there's entirely buildings and real estate, basically. So 300, and you're trading roughly 300 million, and so 200 million is a is is a liquid asset, and then about 100 million is uh, is in real estate. So you've got a pretty decent protection on the downside. So what do we know about the earnings, the cash flows, and the ones you want to really pay most attention is basically kind of the uh, the pre-tax and pre uh, interest earning, the unleveraged, 
And you want to compare that with unleveraged capital that is needed in the business to get you a sense of what kind of business you're having, how much they're making. Give me a quick sense. How much is that? Well, if you're skilled, it shouldn't really take you more than one second to find that out. You got 13% roughly of, uh, of, of operating margins of 800, what, 800, 850 million. So you get roughly, what, 100 million, 110 million? And what is your deployed capital? How much capital is deployed in the business, roughly? You would have roughly about, say, 200 million in, in, uh, in liquid asset, and then about 100 million in buildings. And then the 200 million of liquid asset, probably 100 million is cash. So you'd roughly have a 200 million deployed capital, and roughly returns about $110 million. So your return on your deployed capital roughly around 50% at that point. So that's not a bad business. So you shouldn't really, I mean, you start with, say, you, you give a five second look and you say, hey, the business, I don't care, you know, all the other things. The business was trading roughly, you know, read right around the book value. Book value is pretty clean. Uh, is basically consists of, of a tangible liquid asset, working capital plus, uh, you know, 100 million in real estate. And, uh, and the deployed capital is basically two third of that, and and for that two hundred million, you return roughly a hundred million or so, and so it shouldn't be bad business to begin with. 